day, my parents brought home a piano. It was the finest day I could have had. The piano, from the moment I touched it, I knew there were things in it that would thrill me. I didn't know the literature yet, but so slowly that happened. And as I started playing little pieces, I, I just said, well, what about, what about other things? I didn't know of Beethoven or Scarlatti or anything else. And so I said, um, hmm, maybe I'll start reading. And that was interesting because that reading was the beginning of my writing as well. So I would get these little Shermer editions of uh, Chopin Nocturnes or whatever, or waltzes. I remember I was given waltzes first. And I read this incredible prose. You know, the power of writing is your great power because it is our, our synthesis of knowledge instantaneously. Everything we know by instinct is put into words. And I'm listening to this, right, reading this, this man by the name of James Honecker. Now, this is the greatest of all American critics, not of just music, but of the seven arts, as they say. Somehow, all of this meshed together. I just loved, loved the wholeness of it, the playing, the writing about it, my own playing, and so forth. the most comprehensive virtuoso that ever lived, uh, with a repertoire from Scarlatti to uh, Samuel Barber, the American composer. And when I say that um, through radio I got to interview him, and I went to his home, and um, I put together six programs, which were really quite wonderfully listened to, sponsored by the great firm of Steinway and Sons, and these these programs, six one-hour talks with him, they were the first time he had spoken on radio in New York in 40 years. And so I was very pleased that, you know, he liked me a lot, I felt that. And uh, we did the programs and they won the Peabody Award and I got, you know, this award and I called him at home, uh, you know, this was maybe seven, nine, eight, ten months later and I said, Mr. Horwitz, you know, our shows won a very important uh, award in America called the the Peabody Award. I know what that is, yes. And uh, I said, well, would you like to come to the Hotel Pierre and uh, receive the award with me? W what time is it? I said, it will be at uh, 12 noon. Oh, no, 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 I don't get up until 4. So, uh, you know, that was, he didn't come to get his award and he couldn't care less about any award. The only award, and I had saw many awards from many countries, you know, from Italy, from the, the Presidential Medal, you name it. And the only award that he cared about, which is written well in my book uh, about it, is the uh, Bowtie Award from England. That was the big award for him, and he, that's the award I love, my bow ties, you know how many I have, you know, hundreds, and they're all silk. And um, and I, I said, well, you know, this is this is terrific. I mean, that, that bow tie award looks good. And and on and on, we we uh, we didn't speak to each other for uh, maybe five, six, eight months after that. And Tom Frost, his producer at uh, Sony, and then Deutsche Grammophon, uh, said he said to Tom, he said. Uh, I know David Duval, you know, is, is teaching uh, piano literature at, at Juilliard, but why doesn't he come and talk to me about Beethoven and, and, and Chopin? So Tom calls and says, you know, uh, why don't you go see him? You know, every, every night he has a different person a week uh, that dines with him, and uh, my day is Tuesday, and uh, I, he, would, he would just love to have you as part of this this small little entourage, uh, and I said, uh, well, I'll certainly go see him. You know, I would love to see him again. I never afterwards tried to get in his good graces. Once the, the uh, what do you call it, the, the programs were done, I wasn't going to bother him, and I wasn't going to uh, say, oh, I'd like to know you. <laughs> So 
I went to see him, and then comes three and a half years, Rob, of every Wednesday. I don't think I ever missed one. Sometimes in the summer when other people were gone, um, I would do two or three times a week. And I must say that um, he was the most wonderful man. And after that, I did write a book about him called Evenings with Horowitz. And then another book, which is being published in uh, China very soon called, uh, as well as here, of course, called uh, Remembering Horowitz with 125 great virtuosi writing about him. And it's just, it's an amazing cultural history, this book. Uh, so I got to know him, and I want to tell you the great thing about it, because it was very not easy to be with either of them. They were, you know, can we use the word neurotic? I don't know, I'm neurotic. But um, I can say that Mr. Horowitz, and I always called him that, he said, oh, you know, in the beginning, call me Volodya. No, Maestro, I will never call you Volodya. I will only call you Mr. Horowitz or Maestro. And those are the two words I called him. And he said, um, okay. And that was, that was that. He always called me Mr. Duval. And you always had to, you know, be dressed up, for they were dressed up. You didn't walk in as I'm looking now. There was one thing, I didn't wear a tie, I always wore a scarf, and that, he let that pass. There is no one that I ever learned more from. I learned how that he touched the piano, how he made sonority, how he used the pedal. And it, from that I would say that uh, I learned how to teach many people. Uh, how to play the piano themselves, or to improve, or to make a miracle of something that was, you know, just mediocre. And in no time, because as he did, he believed all things were learned almost instantly. And I could learn from him uh, because he wasn't teaching me. If he was actually teaching me, I would be blank.